A very happy Wednesday to you all. I'm Kenna. Thank you so much for joining me. And we're going to dive into some random indie horror games. Games that I've kind of been collecting along the way that at some point I want to play. So we're going to do it today. First up is Rental. You've probably seen a few people play this. This will be my first go at it. And Rental is basically a cautionary tale about running a vacation house in an unknown place. We apparently play a really cute bunny rabbit, so I hope nothing happens to her. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to leave a link to all the games I played today down in the description box below, but uh, let's go rent. Oh, we're adorable. Oh, God, these controls. Oh, Lord. Uh, okay. Dad, what do you think, Umi? It's not too shabby. Like his little bow tie. If you pay close attention, you can hear the ocean from here. Umi, I can't hear it. Really? Not with those ears? Bro, did you want to play with me? Umi, no. <laughs> Mom? Wait, question mark, where'd you go? Mom, the door's open. Could the rental man already be here? Hey, I talked to all my family. Could you go check for him inside while we unload the car, dear? He's got to give us the keys. What a nice vacation we're going to have. Boy, I don't know. Oh, these controls are going to kill me. Uh, let's go. Let's go by the power of Umi. Umi, who closed the door? Hey, open up. But I'm the one inside. It won't open? Oh, no. I should find that dental... Rental? Rental man. <laughs> oh god. I should find that dental rental rental man. Okay. Oh my god. I apologize. I'm so sorry. Oh. Oh, we can just go through. Oh, okay. So I'm probably not gonna get any kind of other prompt until I, I find the dental man. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? You're not going to tell me? Okay. Kitchen? Any rental dentalmen? No? It's very, very Nintendo 64-ish. I like it. Um. Hmm. Lots of bed. Damn it. Really? You're not gonna... Where is this guy? So, oh. Hi. Can you check my teeth? Rental man. You! Did you come from the outside? Yeah. <laughs> I've been trapped here for weeks, months. I don't even know anymore. He looks tired. Umi, uh, I need to get the keys. My parents are... Rental man, forget about your parents. You'll never see them again anyway. Oh no. Unless. Umi. Unless what? Rental man. You'll have to perform a ritual to exercise this cursed place. Yes, that's it. I can't do it myself, of course. I'm just some helpless rental man. <laughs> but you. You're a little girl. Who else could do it better? What? Umi. I. Rental man. You just need to find the artifacts. It's, um. Let me see. Six crosses, a woman behind bars, some angry man, no, not me, <laughs> three candles, and then, oh, Umi, what? Rental man, wait, I think you should know. There appears to be a secret room somewhere in here. I don't know how to summon it, but some of the stuff is probably there. Good luck. <laughs> Umi, huh? All right. Nothing here. It looks like a good place to hide. No, I'm tired of hiding. Please, no. <laughs> Wonder if 90 DF is on. But the TV looks kind of fuzzy. You look kind of fuzzy, you cute little bunny rabbit. Oh, it's a cross. <laughs> this one was easy. Found cross. 
the hell is that noise? What is this? I can use this to reach high places. Found wooden stool. Very nice. Good job, Umi. Wait. Use the wooden stool to reach the cupboard. Huh. There's nothing there. Look at her cute little pink dress. She's adorable. Please don't kill her. There's a man, but he doesn't look angry. There's a woman, but she's not behind bars. There's some ugly kid, too. <laughs> Damn. Umi ain't got no filter. No problem here. Is there anything to eat? Guess not. Four chairs, huh? My little brother should eat outside. <laughs> Damn, girl. Use the wooden stool to reach the cupboard. Woo! Ah, there's some cross object. Why are you keeping a cross in a kitchen cupboard? What about this? Some random woman with a baby. Is it an ugly baby? Oh my god, so many things. Wait. The table is floating? Fair enough. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. There's always stuff between the cushions. Found a candle. That is a horrible place to put a candle. No problem here. Oh, I don't feel so well. What the hell was that? I can't really do anything with the camera angle. Wait, we've already been in here, haven't we? Have we? Okay. It's locked. Uh-oh. It's not the time to take a nap. Oh. Ooh, cute necklace. <laughs> okay, incredible style. We are styling and profiling. I don't think I can use this. Is the necklace maybe going to protect us? It looks like it's a cross. Okay, sorry. You've already you've already got the bling. Um, okay, this is where he was. Oh! The hell is that? Wish I could sleep on a bed this big. There's something in the drawer. Oh, found a key. Oh, the cupboard thing that was locked. Okay, wait. There's nothing in the drawer. Okay. Wait, where was it? Was it in here? Yeah. Use the key. Close. Close. <gasps> ah, a cross thingy. <laughs> Such a child. A cross thingy. Oh. Is, what is it? Is it like a, a bunny or something? Now this guy looks angry enough. <clears throat> Found angry man. Okay, it's not the time to take a nap. What about just some clothes my dad would wear? He's not the fashionista I am. Whoop, whoop. Umi, I am desperately trying not to walk you into walls, but I'm terrible. Oh! I have a cute necklace. Don't. What's in here? Oh, found two candles. Okay, wait, didn't I need, just need three candles or something? Oh, okay. Blah, 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 blah. We did that one. The ugly baby. A woman behind bars. Weird taste and decoration. Found a woman behind bars. Across the rental house? What? What is this? 
Oh. Why am I smiling like that? Omi, why are you smiling like that? What the hell is this? Hello? Whoa! Oh god. Oh no! Is this like a mirror maze? Between my horrible ability at these controls and a mirror maze. Lord have mercy. So yes, I did go back the way I came. Oh, this is gonna take forever, you guys. It's gonna take forever. I'll never forgive controllers for what they did to me and my keyboard abilities. I get really quiet is because unfortunately stupidly I'm having to concentrate really hard <laughs> oh across okay so I think we have all the candles right it was just three we need six crosses Ooh, are they both gonna be in here hmm this is weird I'm waiting to see something in the reflection That looks like it's a dead end. <gasps> One more. Grab it, Umi. Grab it. One left. Okay. Nice. Look at you, little bunny rabbit. This poor child's going to be traumatized. So I had to go all the way back to the beginning because I got turned around and Viola, I did miss a turn. Holy crap, the last one. Now what? Please get me out of here. Um, so since I didn't take that turn, I probably didn't go all the way down this path. <gasps> I'm just going to say that's a dead end. And we're just going to go through the door. We're going to go through the door. The door is open. Wah -ha. Beyond the rental house, huh? Are we a giant? No, we're not a giant. Okay, it's just the perspective. Oh, wait. I had a question mark. Ah. Okay, so we got to lay these things out now. This is where we will perform the ritual. Wait. Give me more question marks. Probably not going to be this far out. Oh, yeah. Picture. Picture. Cross. I don't candle. Cross. Hello. Oh, that's where I came from. What is that? Is it just like maybe a shadow on the rock? I can't tell. Oh, looks like I can perform the ritual here. Yeah, I should place all the stuff I have in a circle. Well, I'm trying. I'm not getting. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, another candle, I think. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Is that everything? Oh, no. Damn it. I bet some of y'all are backseat gaming right now. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. No, we're not gonna... We're not gonna... Okay. Yeah? I feel like... Is that everything? Three... Okay, everything is placed. What should I even say? That useless man just disappeared on me. Okay, here goes nothing. Parika, Perilla, Poparina, Pepperuto? Oh, is it like a demon bunny? What the hell? She's a good mom. Hello? 
Earth to Umi. <laughs> What's that smile? Umi. Mom, seems like the rental man is not here yet. Might as well unpack what we can. Umi. Mm. Mom, oh, never mind. The door is open. Could you go check? Umi. I don't think we should go inside the house. Look at her face. <laughs> oh, back home. Well, I'm glad she survived. I was really worried about her there for a, a minute. Oh, I liked it. It's free. It's a free game. It's really cute. All right, so let's move on to the next one. It was it was creepy cute, cutesy creepy. Oh, it was made for a game jam. I didn't know that. This is available on Steam. I don't know if it's on itch.io. Is it itch.io or itch.io? Doesn't matter. I enjoyed it. Ooh. I like that that logo too. That like splash. All right, we're moving on to the next one. Hey, hey, hey. So this is West Grove by Spring Rabbit. I think this is like one of their first games. And we're going to take on the role of Kirk, who is an unemployed guy with some heinous debt. And he takes on the job as a new lookout for the town of West Grove. And it might not have been the best idea. Starting operating system. Oh my god, CD-ROM, y'all. Back in the day. Let's see. Um, oh, I don't think it's a bad idea. John mentioned a job as a lookout on some land near his workplace in West Grove, a small town. Since the accident, I've been struggling to find work, and the bills are piling up. I know I need to do something about it. Just please take care of the kids. I'll get them something on my way back. Kirk Hansen, October 13th, 1980, 1985, telephone call log. Oh my god, 1985, that was the beginning of Murder House, wasn't it? Yeah, because the main game was 1988. The old noggin's still working. This is my stop. Whew. Hell yeah, we got the, the 80s retro style. Don't do we go this way. There's a building. This seems to be the place. I just need to figure out how to get in. <sighs> okay, wait a minute. We're a lookout, right? Can I... Private property. It looks like I've already found a way in. Oh. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the murdering can begin. <laughs> see. It's... Uh... Do we, Kirk, my guy, you got nothing to say about that? There's just clothes on the ground. I tried clicking on them and there's like nothing, I couldn't interact with it. Let's see, we got two ways we can go. Ooh. Let's see. Um, it's locked. Maybe I can see something through the keyhole. Oh God. Well, we see a pentagram. That's always good. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be a terrible mechanic. We're gonna see something we don't want to see. <laughs> How about we don't? How about a big old no? I refuse. Oh, I can't look through the keyhole again. Okay, it's a one-time deal. Can I go this way? No, big old invisible wall. Okay. Oh boy, okay. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good about this new job. I probably get absolutely horrible benefits, but you know, sometimes you gotta take what you can take. Dog eat dog world and all that. Where am I going? Listen to this music. <laughs> it's a nice autumn day, the start of a new job, a new you. You totally won't be murdered later. <laughs> What's this? It's locked. Maybe I can see something through the keyhole. Ooh. Okay. I'm like backing away from my microphone. I guess let's just keep going. I'm not really... 
I'm not really sure. I, we clearly have to get into that building. I just don't know. I think this is a good place to set up my camp. We're camping? All right. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Seems that someone has entered the radio frequency. John. This is John. Are you receiving me? Kirk. Yeah, your signal's good. John. How are things going? Kirk. Good. I've just set up camp. John. Great. This is a quiet job. It'll be easy for you. Uh, you shouldn't be too far from here. I think you can see my watchtower from where you are. Kirk. Yeah, I saw it on the way here. Did we? I don't think we did. <laughs> John. Anyway, just be aware if any vandals break in, they're harmless, just stupid kids. Although, it's very unlikely that this will happen. Are we armed? Just do your job. Remove some graffiti and whatever other shit those kids have been up to. The owner doesn't want buyers to be scared off by some silly joke. You can start from the main factory. The building next to it is completely walled off, so you won't, be, you won't need to go into it. Nobody has been there for a long time, so take whatever shit you can find. No one will miss it anyway. An employee should show up tomorrow to check things out and pay you. I think that's it. I'll be on the frequency if you need anything. Kirk, okay, thanks, man. I better get my sponge from my backpack and my flashlight before I go. Ah, yes, the almighty sponge. Okay. Okay, flashlight. Ooh, like that noise. So, I'm supposed to be taking graffiti off, huh? I thought I was supposed to be a watchtower person. Why am I camping? Why is John up in the watchtower? Hello? What the hell was that? It's locked. Yeah, but it's got graffiti. Hello? Wait, was this here? Looks like there's something on the path. Yeah, this is where that shadow person was. Does it open this door? Immediately just got Admiral Akbar in my head. It's a trap! No. Okay, maybe it goes to the main building, of which we are trying to get into. I'm not, I'm not buying this music. I like the music, the music's nice, but I'm not buying it. Something bad's gonna happen. This is kind of the run, by the way. It's kind of just like a really nice speed walk. Ah! He, yeah, that's not a lock that it went into. All right, a pentagram. I thought these kids would be more creative. Should clean that before entering the factory. Well, we've got our spiffy diffy sponge here. Um, that, that wouldn't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> glad it works in the game because I don't want to put more effort into it than I, I should, but yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna clean anything. Oh. Can I open these things? I can. Please tell me I'm not gonna have to hide. There, perfect. This is an amazing sponge. Debris. There's debris blocking the way. <laughs> okay. It's locked from the other side. Oh god, this keyhole thing is gonna give me a heart attack. I know it is. Well, it looks like there's a big old hole in the floor. I re that's not okay. I can't get into it. I can't get into it. So no hiding. <laughs> that's exciting. Anything here? No. It's locked. Oh god, another keyhole. Oh. Uh. Like, I can't look around or anything when I look through the keyhole. Alright, well, there's creepy candles lit, so that means somebody's in here. Ooh, old newspaper. 
Oh, God, February 2nd, 1933. The town of Dairyfield is teetering on the brink of bankruptcy, facing an unprecedented exodus of residents. A significant portion of the town's former inhabitants have chosen to move to neighboring towns in the region. This intriguing phenomenon has captured the attention of statisticians and demographers alike. While pinpointing the exact cause of this issue remains challenging, it is believed to be linked to a myriad of factors, ranging from issues with infrastructure and public services to the soaring cost of living. A town hall debate is currently in the planning stages, aiming to chart a course for Dairyfield's future. If substantial, substantial changes are not implemented, Dairyfield's fate appears ominously tied to the prospect of becoming a ghost town. Mayor Frank Barnes declined to be interviewed. Of course he did. He's a bureaucratic dickhead. I lit candle. It seems that someone has been here recently. I'd better be on my guard. Dude, you never come into these places without being armed. I'm so- Ooh! Key! I don't think it's gonna open this door wood plank it seems that the wood plank has jammed the door it's stuck i can't get it out with my bare hands okay so this key probably opens this door yay don't come after me i have a sponge the locker door is tied with rope it's too tough for me to remove on my own Oh, I'm going to use it on the wood plank, probably. Cool. Okay. I thought maybe if we hit that hard enough, it would knock the actual handles off. We wouldn't have to worry about the rope. But apparently, we're going to have to worry about the rope. Oh, we got caved in. That's what happened. Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. All right. More candles. Okay, same thing. Let's see. Any notes? Any lore? Nope, lighter. Are we gonna, um... It's locked. The hinges aren't screwed on. I think I can open it if I lift the door somehow? Okay, maybe we use the lighter on the rope? I didn't miss anything, did I? Sometimes with these graphics, because they kind of have that blurred edge, sometimes notes and stuff on a flat surface are, are easily overlooked. At least by me. <laughs> I won't put that at anybody else's feet. All right, let's see. Hell yeah. Get my trusty hammer ready. I can't, like, metal pipe. Ooh, even better. I beat somebody to death with it. I can't, like, swing anything. There's no action with these. You know, the metal pipe or the, the hammer. Okay, we are an industrious thing. How are we unemployed? Oh, this was the hole in the floor I saw. Okay. No, I don't want to climb down. I want to get out. <laughs> I think we got all the graffiti. This damn place is falling apart. I don't know why they care so much about it. Better make sure I've removed all the graffiti and get out of here. Who cares? I think we did. We're, we're gonna just... We're just gonna go. And nothing weird has happened out here since we came in this building. I promise. I'm gonna use my damn hammer on them. Somehow. I guess we go back to camp. Oh, where's my pack of cigarettes? Really, Kirk? I sh I'm sure I left them in my pocket. I must have dropped it at the bus stop. I'm not too far away. I think I can stop by before I go to my campsite. This is why I don't get in the habit, dude. They rule your life, and they make you make bad decisions. What the hell? <gasps> that is one ifed up scarecrow. Wait, that wall's gone, too. That had the clothes behind it. What the, oh, it's the clothes. Did I take the wrong way? No. No, you did not. I'm pretty sure this was the right way. How did that wall get there? It looks like there's some paper stuck to it. Oh, God. Well, our fate's been sealed. October 28th, 1932. Distrust and fear spread through Dairyfield. In a growing atmosphere of unease, the residents of Dairyfield find themselves grappling with the mounting uncertainty. 
April 20, uh, oh, April 6, 1932, missing since December 14, 1931. Local sheriffs made a significant breakthrough today in the case of the missing 16-year-old student, Helen Baker, who vanished three months ago. A vital piece of evidence, her dress was found near the entrance to the expanse of forest surrounding the area. The sheriff's department is now mobilizing the search effort in the vicinity in hopes of locating Helen. <gasps> That's what the clues indicated. Missing Henry Simmons, 13 years old, black hair, brown eyes, date of birth, August 3rd, 1919. Uh, that is not a child. <laughs> March 18th, 1932. Despite the diligent efforts of volunteer search teams, there remains no sign of Thomas Lewis. The local dairy field sheriffs maintained the theory that Lewis fled town in connection with outstanding gambling debts. However, his family vehemently disputes this explanation, insisting there is more to the story. There usually is. I thought somebody was up behind me. It's illegible contains a car crash photo. The text is illegible. Is that everything? Wait. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Please do not get me, scarecrow thing. I must have missed it. I better try to find my way back to camp. It's starting to get dark. Oh no, why is this open? sticks to mark my burial spot. I sincerely apologize for the inconvenience of not being present upon your arrival. It has come to our attention that one of the one of our supervisors encountered a bear attack near the end of our shift. We are taking immediate action to address this situation. All large equipment and machinery have been promptly gathered and transferred to the combined storage warehouse. Additionally, we have installed bear traps on the exterior of the premises before our departure, although we acknowledge that this precaution should have been our initial priority. I extend my heartfelt apologies for any disruption this incident may have caused. What? I don't get it. Are we maybe blaming disappearances in this area on bears? But who is that? Who is that? Nope. Two. Four. Still got my hammer <laughs> that I can't use. Looks like I'm back in camp. I better start lighting my fire and go to my tent. Um, oh, that's what the stick. I'm glad I picked it. I need to find some sticks to build my campfire. Well, lucky, lucky us. How about that? And I guess I used the lighter, huh? Oh my god. I'm a regular bear girl. So I'm exhausted. I think I'm going to rest in my tent. Let's go rest, everybody. This has been an extremely trying day of scrubbing graffiti my arms ache all that good stuff well that certainly isn't disconcerting what time is it is it still night it must it must be my insomnia again Stop being creepy. Kirk. John? Can you hear me? Hello? It's probably just interference. I'm hungry. I better eat something. I brought a lunch in my backpack. It's a little too late for lunch, my guy. I mean, it's pitch dark, but okay. Oh, classic peanut butter and bread. Can't go wrong. Um, okay, bread. Wait, what do I do? Oh. What the hell was that? Those damn kids might have stepped into a bear trap. Uh-huh. I better go ahead and check it out. No. You shouldn't. It sounded like it was coming from this way. But I think I'm, like, blocked off. <laughs> Don't you dung at me. They cut the fence, too. How did I not hear that? Oh. Yeah, let's go through. Oh, you're here. You moved. Why did you move? I can't get up closer to it. I, it's following me. Oh, God. It doesn't look like it's moving, moving, but it was turning in my direction. Creep it. Ooh. Is that part of the factory? Is that like a house? I can't. 
Hmm. Okay, there's like barbed wire around it. Is this another path? I guess. Yeah, let's go. Let's go meet our fate. A house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a house, all right. That is a house. Kirk, is anyone there? What the F have those kids done? I should have noticed them cutting the damn fence. I'm screwed. I better check what happened. Maybe it's nothing serious. Oh, it's gonna be serious. It's gonna be serious. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the last serious thing that ever happens in your life, Kirk. <laughs> oh, I hear something. Fridge. It's rusty. <laughs> okay. Fee, fi, fo. It seems there's someone behind this wall. Oh, God. Kirk, are you okay? I'll get you out of there. There are no gaps to pull it with my hands. I have to find a way to pull up this wall. You got Thor's hammer right there in your hand, buddy. Okay, what am I supposed to... I got a rusty fridge. A can-do attitude and a hammer. Oh, canvas. Oh. Padlock. E. Mm. <gasps> no! I want my hammer! Give me my hammer back! Oh god, okay, I'm back to the sponge. Oh god, I didn't mean to, but it's open. <laughs> this is a mighty sponge. Do not mess with me. Clock. An old clock. It's not working. Cool. Glad we could point that out. A coat hanger. It's empty and falling apart. Okay. Oh, quidisiderent kelly. Oh, it's Latin. It's Latin. Abandoned house with many disappearances and you find Latin inside of it, just, you're dead. You're dead. There's there's no other, no other way around it, dude. It's over for you. Yeah, maybe something can be seen through the keyhole. Uh-huh. <sighs> Something's gonna be in one of these keyholes, damn it. Yeah, let's look, let's just roll the dice. Mm-hmm. Do I use this coat hanger? On the wall? I want my hammer back, damn it. <laughs> I couldn't use it, but it made me feel safe. The hell? What? It's empty. What kind of place is this? I better get the hell out of here. Yeah, good luck. Screwdriver. I've been here for days and no one has come looking for me. I hear him shouting to himself. I think he's crazy. I was running very fast and I heard Ralph calling me, but it was the scarecrow. I think they can see through its eyes. I tried to find my way to the town, but the forest looks different every minute and the night never seems to end. He locked me in here because I managed to escape from the basement. I found the screwdriver behind the house. This is my only hope to get out of here alive. He said everything is almost ready. What's almost ready? Dinner? Am I dinner? <laughs> okay. What the hell is this? Uh, I look like a bunch of men in hooded robes. Are you still rusty? It's still rusty. Okay. Where'd the door go? The door's gone. Lord have mercy. Stop. Please. <laughs> Hold the shelf. The doors won't open. The hinge must be rusty. There's a rusty fridge downstairs. I can't use a screwdriver on it. Can I use a screwdriver on the wall? Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, let's look through the keyhole. Mm. 
On February 26, 1933, on this Sunday, the population of Dairyville has been updated, revealing a staggering 86% decrease since 1932. Mayor Frank Barnes has now addressed the issue, and in a last-ditch effort, has he has garnered support for renaming the town from Dairyville to West Grove with the hopes of revitalizing the area to attract new tourists and residents. Did that thing just move away from the door? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> what the f? No. Oh. oh. Ow. Oh Lord, what was? What? I don't want to turn around. Okay, that door won't open. <gasps> Hallelujah! Door's back. Why did it? Oh. Oh God. Oh, now he said the force changed, didn't he? Shh. Do, 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 do. Don't kill me. I think I found the path somehow. <laughs> Where am I going? What? Oh, the scarecrow's still there. Oh, look, our camp. Let's go. <laughs> what? Um. Can I go back? Let's go back. Oh! Nope! Nope, can't go back. Okay, go back. Don't do it. Oh dear. Okay, I wanna I wanna I wanna go back and see what the dude looks like that comes out of the door. Cause all we got was his eyeball. Big above. Oh, can I go I can't go in. Ow. Lord, you're tall. Oh. Yikes. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Who Wants to Be a Murderer? That is an enticing title. Um, this was made for the Acerella Jam Zero with the theme Apparition. So... This looks kind of very dark humorish. I don't know. We're going to do you want the CRT effect. I'm going with I'm sticking with the CRT effect. Let's just let's let's play it how the dev intended us to play. How about that? Alright, I'm gonna type in my name. And uh I, I guess let's the game begin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome one and all to the twisted spectacle that is our game show. Today, my dear viewers, we have a most intriguing case of characters lined up for your entertainment. But enough for me. Let's dive right in and meet our first participant, shall we? And now, from the bustling metropolis of Chicago, where truth is a commodity bought and sold, <laughs> we welcome Sarah Thompson, a journalist diligently seeking the ultimate scoop. Good evening, viewers. Let's have some fun and games, shall we? From the concrete jungle of New York City, where dreams come to die, we have the enigmatic Richard Greystone, a man whose legal prowess is matched only by his moral flexibility. Greetings, esteemed guests. It's a pleasure to grace your screens with my presence. Let the games begin. Next up, straight from unknown with the skill and determination of a true gamer, our wild card participant. Oh, I guess that's us. Um. Hey there. <laughs> hey there. Let's get this game started. And of course, our final contestant needs no introduction, hailing from the foggy streets of London, where whispers of the occult echo through the night. We have the inscrutable Edgar Darkwood, a man whose secrets are as numerous as the stars themselves. Greetings, mortals. Let's embrace the unknown together. And there you have it, dear viewers. Our motley crew of contestants, each with their own dark desires and ambitions. Ready to do battle in this arena? So sit back, relax, and prepare yourselves for a journey into the heart of madness. Let the games begin. This is terrible. Welcome to the first phase of the show. This is where we separate the wheat from the chafe, the knowledge seekers from the mere mortals. 
In this round, your gray matter will be put to the test, and every correct answer will swell your coffers by a handsome 10,000. Now, without further ado, let's delve into the depths of the unknown, shall we? Let's hear it. Questions up. What substance was famously used in ancient times to preserve bodies for eternity? Oh, natron, formaldehyde, tar, honey. I don't think it's formaldehyde. Is it honey? And the answer is... Wrong. Oh, oh no. The ancient Egyptians used natron, a natural salt mixture, to preserve bodies during the mummification process. Richard, here's your moment. Oh, just moving on, I guess. What is the name of the infamous serial killer who inspired the character of Norman Bates in Psycho? The answers are A. John Wayne Gacy B. Ted Bundy C. Ed Gain and D. Jeffrey Dahmer Richard oh. My guess is Ted Bundy And the answer is Correct The man behind the inspiration for Norman Bates is none other than Ed Gain the charming gentleman with a penchant for interior decorating Um... Ah, Sarah, here's the question. Which famous composer is said to have been buried in a mass grave? The answers are... A. Ludwig van Beethoven B. Frederick Chopin C. Johann Sebastian Bach and D. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart Richard cheated, dude. My guess is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And the answer is... Correct. Great. I'm the only one who has gotten the wrong answer. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the genius behind Timeless Melodies, was tragically buried in an unmarked mass grave, adding a haunting twist to his legacy. Next up, Edgar's question. Which of the following animals has been known to engage in cannibalism? God. The answers are... A. Koalas. B. Chimpanzees. C. Hamsters. And D. Dolphins. My guess is hamsters. And the answer is... Correct. Great. I'm the only one who hasn't been on board. Although, I think Richard cheated. He said Ted Bundy and it was Ed Gain. That concludes our first round of mind-bending questions, folks. And with that, we'll be taking a short break for our sponsors. But don't wander off, my lovelies. When we return, it's time for a bloody exciting game coming up next. And remember, there's no cutting corners here. Well... Except when it comes to the minigame with a knife, of course. Oh, God. <laughs> My dear contestants, we're off the air for now, but fear not. If you need anything, anything at all, you know where to find me. Just don't keep me waiting too long. That sounds like a threat. Oh, I can talk to them? Can I leave? Oh, hey, Sarah. I, I don't know if I can do this. I'm scared. What if I mess up? What if I get hurt? Well, I messed up, and I'm still here. You're stronger than you think. We can find a way. We can find a way. Listen, Sarah, if you're not up for this, we can find a way out. This game isn't worth risking hurting you. I think I think I need to get out of here. Yes, it's probably best if you leave. No, hang in there. Yeah, take off, dude. Do what you gotta do. Yes, you're right. It's better to withdraw now. Thank you. I appreciate your understanding. Well, Richard's gonna cheat anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh! <laughs> oh, oops! Oh, no. Can can I take that back? Can I take it back? Uh, uh. Listen, in this game, there's no turning back or running away. It's best to keep that in mind. Let's dive back in. Oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live once again, but unfortunately, we have encountered a slight setback. Sarah will be unable to continue with the games due to an unforeseen circumstance. Yeah, murder. With one contestant already eliminated, we'll have to skip our first minigame, albeit reluctantly. But fear not, dear viewers, for the show must go on. We're diving straight into our second round of questions. Where the contestant's moral fiber will be put under the microscope for all to see. Every answer in this round will earn you 10,000. So feel free to speak your mind without any inhibitions. Let's see who will rise to the occasion and who will falter under the weight of their own conscience. Get ready for some thought-provoking questions, folks. Ah, here's the question. 
You find a diary detailing someone's darkest secrets. What's your next move? Respect the owner's privacy, read it and then return it. Read it aloud in a live stream. Use the information to your advantage. Um, well, if we're dealing with somebody's darkest secrets, we've already read it. So I guess read it and then return it. I mean, we've already done that. Oh, interesting. Secrets. Secrets are no fun unless they're shared with everyone. Oh. Ah, Richard, here's the question. You witness a stranger being harassed in public. What action do you take? The answers are... A. Intervene to defend the stranger. B. Ignore and walk away. C. Join in for some fun. And D. Alert the authorities as a witness. Is this just pick the worst answers possible? My answer is ignore and walk away. I keep changing his voice. Oh, interesting. To be a hero or a bystander, that is the question. Time to reveal your true self. Edgar, here's your moment. You encounter a stranger offering you a mysterious potion with unknown effects. What do you do? The answers are... A. Accept eagerly, ready for anything. B. Accept cautiously, hoping for the best. C. Politely refuse or import the encounter. And D. Decline and warn others. My answer is accept eagerly, ready for anything. Oh, interesting. Ah, oh, the elixir of uncertainty. Will you tempt fate or play it safe? All right, folks, that wraps up the second round of questioning. And my, my, have we peeled back some layers. Now we've got a glimpse of the real deal, the raw essence of each contestant. They've sized each other up, and believe me, they're sharpening their claws for what's to come. The voting phase is up next. Stay tuned after this short break. We'll reveal the two finalists of this twisted little game. Boy, is it. And for you out there watching at home, don't forget to call our toll-free number to join us in the studio audience for the next episode. There's always a need for fresh faces and victims. Voting, eh? Well, well, well. Things are about to get interesting. The shadows deepen. Well, folks, it seems we're off the air for now. If you need to know where, when we're back, you know where to find me. Just don't keep me waiting too long. Yeah, you're going to be standing there. Um, Richard. Hi. So, it's come down to this, huh? Tell me, should I trust you over the other contestant? I feel like we're supposed to pick the worst answers, but, um, yeah. Edgar, the champ, he's a trouble for me and for you. It'd be risky for you to face off with him in the finale, wouldn't it? How about we vote him out and clear the path for us? Okay, let's do it. I don't want to play dirty. Okay, let's, let's, bad answer. Let's, ooh, maybe we can say let's do it and then double cross him. I feel like that's what the game wants us to do. <gasps> oh no, I hate being mean. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so, are you ready to continue? Do you need another moment? I, you know what? Let's talk to Edgar. Watch your back, mate. Trust is a rare commodity in these parts. I keep fluctuating between British and Australian. Yeah, I'm ready to continue. Let's kill one of these dudes. Excellent. Let's dive back in. Before we kick things off, gotta say I like the answer you gave in that last round. You're holding your own pretty well. No, I'm not. I'm just a fan of the show. Let's kiss ass. Oh, really now? Well, color me impressed. Always nice to meet a dedicated viewer. Okay, let's continue. Okay, we're gonna double cross Richard. Welcome back, folks. We're live again. Before we dive back in, here's a quick shopping advice. Looper, the last mission, a small arcade shooter where you're trapped in a time loop and battle against your past selves. And it's available at the incredible price of zero dollars. It's time to introduce our next phase, the voting round. Is that the devs? Is that another game the dev did? Here's how it works. Each player will cast their vote on who they believe should be eliminated. The contestant with the most votes will be out of the game. Now, to avoid any unpleasant deadlock situations where everyone gets a vote, in that case, all participants would be eliminated and there'd be no winner. So, think carefully, including who you believe others might vote for. Alright, let's get down to it. Who are you voting for? Richard, we're going to backstab Richard because I think that's what you want me to do. You want me to be a jerk. Richard, what about you? Don't vote for me. No hesitation. And finally, the champ, Edgar. Richard. 
All right, we have a winner, or should I say an eliminated contestant? Richard, you're out of the game. Why is Becker saying that? All right, folks, we're getting closer to the grand finale of this show, and that means the questions are getting a bit more serious. Each correct answer in this final round will earn you a whopping 25,000. But enough chit chat, let's dive right into the last round of questions. Here we go, question time. What is the estimated time it takes for a human body to completely decompo decompose in soil? Oh god. Um, well it really depends on the soil, doesn't it? And, and what part of the world they're being buried in? <laughs> Could I whine more? I'm getting the hard questions. I mean, 9 to 12, 1 to 2, 3 to 5, year 6 to 8. 3 to f 5? I mean, I feel like it's maybe 3 to 4, but it really does depend. And the answer is wrong. Oh god, I haven't gotten a question right yet. 68 years and nature's embrace, human bodies returned to dust, erased by time's relentless march. Time to shine, Edward. Questions here. How long does it typically take a lethal dose of cyanide to cause death in humans? It'd be almost instantaneous. The answers are... 15 to 30 minutes, 4 to 6 hours, <laughs> 1 to 2 hours, 5 to 10 minutes. It's gonna be D. It's gonna be 5 to 10 minutes. It's cyanide. My guess is 5 to 10 minutes. And the answer is... Correct. Oh! Five to ten minutes, cyanide's deadly kiss, stealing breath with bitter almonds and sweet mortality. Alright folks, it's time for our last commercial break before the grand finale. Our two finalists will engage in duel filled with thrills and spills, a real bloodbath of entertainment. Oh god. My dear contestants, this is your last chance to catch your breath. Hope you're all handy with a rifle. Oh god. What? What are we doing? I'm sorry, but even you can't escape the inevitable. Good luck. Well, it's that time. We've all been waiting for Are you ready to face the final showdown, or do you need a moment to gather yourself? I'm ready. Let's do this, dude. Excellent. Let's dive back in. I like your style. Tell you what, how about a little arrangement? I'll start your timer 10 seconds after your opponent, and oh, let's add a little twist. I'll make sure your opponent's rifle is... Let's say, not at its best. Just a little advantage to even the odds, eh? Aww. I guess let's accept it. I feel bad about cheating, though. Boy, I'm a real Pollyanna, aren't I? Excellent choice, my friend. Now that's the spirit of the show. I knew it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back on air. We're about to find out who will be the winner of this exciting night. Before we dive back in, here's the last shopping tip. <laughs> Astronomy, an asynchronous multiplayer where you can explore the universe, uncover, and discover, and name over 10,000 constellations. And guess what? It's absolutely free. I mean, who's the fool paying us to promote these, right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and esteemed finalists, perhaps, you're, perhaps by now you've grasped the essence and purpose of this spectacle. In the initial phase of questioning, we tested our contestants' knowledge, then their courage in the knife minigame. We had to skip that. In the second phase of questioning and in the voting, we probed the morality of the players and the coldness required to choose to eliminate another individual. In the final phase of questioning, we assessed whether you know the method, and if you made it here, you've all the cards on the table to be true murderers. There's just one final step to truly define yourselves as such. Action! And so, in this last phase, you'll be armed with a rifle in 30 seconds of time. Whoever manages to take out the most people from the audience will be the new champion of this dazzling episode of our game show. <laughs> Let the festivities begin! Oh my god! This is terrible! I can't, I can't really look any further than the section that's directly in front of me, which is good. Um, just think of it as the game at, at fairs where you have to shoot the ducks. What the hell? Sick, sick mind came up with this. No! 
Yeah, I can't look further over. Uh, no, damn it. Let me shoot you. I want to win. Oh, we got 30. Dude, Edgar, you suck ass, dude. Well, all right, folks, it's time to announce the winner of tonight's thrilling episode. Well, Edgar's got more money than me. But before we do, let's give a round of applause to our brave contestants for their <clears throat> valiant efforts. Now, without further ado, our champion, or should I say, our murderer, is none other than... No! Please don't do this! I'll do anything! I'll beg! Wow! But remember, this victory isn't just about the prize. It's about the journey. The thrill of the hunt! This is terrible. The adrenaline rush of the kill. And let's not forget the sweet intoxicating scent of blood in the air. <laughs> so without further ado, let's crown our murder and bid farewell to another exhilarating episode of... Oh! Oh yeah, this has multiple endings, three or four. Wall of Aberration. Manly. Oh! <gasps> Manly badass hero, maybe? Okay, let's see. Let's let's see if we can um, get another ending. Maybe even get the mini game. Hey, my question. What is the name of the mythical creature said to lure sailors to their doom? Oh, it's freaking Siren. And the answer is correct. Finally, thank you. The enchanting yet deadly siren with her haunting melodies led countless sailors to their watery graves, a chilling tale of maritime peril. I, I don't know if I can do this, Kenna. I'm scared. What if I mess up? What if I get hurt? You're stronger than you think. Oh, you're stronger than you think, Sarah. This game might be tough, but we'll get through it together. You, you really think so? Okay, Kenna, let's do this. Now it's time for our first mini game of the evening, where the contestants' courage will be put to the test. Let's see if they have what it takes to handle a little knife play. Here are the rules. Contestants will have 30 seconds to score as many points as possible. They must touch the table with the tip of the knife, avoiding any mishaps with their hands. At the end of the timer, the contestants with the lowest score will be the first to face elimination. Let the games begin. Oh god. For some reason, hitting my pinky. I'm like gritting my teeth. Whoa, that was bad. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. The first elimination. Mm, the unfortunate soul who will be bidding us to do tonight is none other than... Oh, I died. Ending one of four. Well, that stinks. But you know what? I'm okay. We did two endings. I'm going to leave it at that. I think, if I remember correctly, on the Itchy page, there's four endings. So I'll leave that for you all to discover yourselves. All right. I actually enjoyed all three games I played. That's kind of rare when I do these random indie games. Um, it's usually like I like to dislike one or I like one. And it just it really depends. It's very flexible. Um, rental, like I said, it was cutesy creepy, like a demonic Animal Crossing. Uh, West Grove, Spring Rabbit, I, I kind of have an affinity for their games. And like I said, I think it maybe was one of their first games that they ever did. Um, and then this, this was kind of like a Running Man, like Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Running Man, I think that's what it's called. Kind of like a RoboCop dystopian world we're living in where this is completely an acceptable broadcast. It's really messed up, but it was, it was actually really well done. I'm going to leave a link to all of these down in the description box for you all. Thank you all so much for joining me. I'm going to plan to see you tomorrow, hopefully. You can let me know what you think down in the comments below. Take care. Have a great Wednesday.